that you have enlightened us by revealing the light that never fades. Night is falling, and day's allotted span draws to a close. The daylight which you created for our pleasure has fully satisfied us, and yet, of your free gift, now the evening lights do not fail us. We praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him be glory, honor, and power to you in the Holy Spirit, now and always, and forever and ever. of our repentance prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever and ever. This midweek Lenten service comes from Exodus chapter 14. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, 
that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness. And it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. Of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Our epistle lesson is from Hebrews chapters 3 and 4. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of their unbelief. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not un united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he has said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel from St. Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. 
And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Back at the time of Joseph in the Old Testament, God's people, the family of Jacob or the children of Israel, they suffered from a severe famine in the land. And many of you will recall the story that happened at the time, right at that same time as there was a famine throughout the land, Joseph's brothers, out of jealousy, sold him into slavery down to Egypt. And you'll recall all the various events that took place during those coming years while Joseph was down in Egypt. But ultimately, God used it all for good. And eventually, through those events, all of Joseph's relations, all of his family, all of his brothers and all of their families, they all moved down to Egypt and were thereby saved from the famine. So for them, at that point in time, the land of Egypt was a land of salvation. They lived in the area of Goshen within the land of Egypt, which was a beautiful land, a bountiful land, and they enjoyed the plenty of the earth. And they grew and became strong and prosperous and numerous. Egypt was the land of salvation. Then you also will recall what happened afterwards. A number of generations later, under a new pharaoh, the Egyptians became fearful of the children of Israel, became fearful of their strength and their numbers and they forcibly enslaved them. And at that point, the land of Egypt, which was at first the land of life and salvation, now became the land of death and enslavement. At first it was a blessing, then it became a curse. How often does this happen to us as well? Something in life that God has given you that is a blessing. But then through misuse, or maybe having too much, you know, too much of a good thing, as the saying goes, and it becomes sinful. We are blessed with freedom in this country. Freedom to do what we want, freedom to be what we want, freedom to go what we want. We have tremendous freedoms, and that is a great blessing from God. But unfortunately, I think, especially in this day and age, we start to take that freedom for granted. And we start to become lazy or complacent. And we use that freedom not for good, but for neglect. And we neglect the work that we should be doing. We neglect helping and serving our neighbors. We neglect coming to God's house. And after all, we have that freedom, and we use that freedom to not go, and to not help, and to not serve. And as a consequence, the blessing of freedom becomes the curse of idleness and laziness. Another great blessing that we have right now is the blessing of technology. It's a wonderful blessing multiple ways to communicate with people around the world, instant news from anywhere about anything. You can make purchases and reservations right from your phone, and in your hand you hold more computing power today than the mainframes of yesterday. And yet, too much technology, too much screen time, And we end up losing our ability to converse, to communicate face to face. We lose our ability to interact with other people. We lose our sense of community and fellowship with one another, even when we're in the same room. And the great blessing of technology becomes the curse of isolation and loneliness. Back then, in our story today that we're contemplating, the land of Egypt was at first a blessing. 
a great blessing, a land of bounty, a land of plenty. And then it became a land of enslavement. I would say the object, the substance, the thing throughout human history that is most easily understood as simultaneously a blessing and a curse is water. Water, the most basic substance of life. You cannot live without water. It's absolutely necessary. Nothing alive can survive without water. And particularly here in this place, we are blessed with an abundance of fresh water. And yet, as you know, too much water kills. Too much water is a curse. It drowns. It floods. It destroys. Of course, you can bring to mind the time of Noah. It was water that brought about judgment upon all the evil of the world, and yet it was water at the same time that saved Noah and his family, eight souls and all. And think about this story that we're contemplating right now. Out of fear, the Hebrew babies were being drowned by too much water. And yet it was because of water that Moses was saved, floating in a basket, being found by Pharaoh's daughter. It was a little bit later after that that God led his people Israel through the water, the water of the Red Sea on dry ground, saving them. And yet at the same time, he drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host, bringing judgment upon them. Water is simultaneously, at the same time, salvation and judgment. And then much later, a generation later, it was through water, the water of the Jordan River, that judgment was placed on the wilderness behind, that the people left behind them, while salvation was open to them in front of them, the promised land before. Water was the border. Water was the point upon which they crossed, bringing judgment on the past, but opening salvation for the future. And through water, God's people were brought out of exile. You, too, are brought out of exile through water. The water of your baptism. You are brought out of exile in the wilderness of your sin, and you are brought into the salvation of eternal life through the waters of holy baptism, of your baptism. That water is a blessing. It brings the blessing of the Holy Spirit. It gives the gift of faith in Jesus. It brings the blessing of forgiveness to you. And at the same time, that very water in baptism brings judgment. It brings judgment upon your old Adam. It brings judgment upon the sin that is within you. And it brings judgment upon that sin by transferring it to Christ by strapping it to Jesus, by binding your sin and mine to Christ through the water. Jesus didn't need to be baptized. That wasn't for him. He was baptized for you. He was baptized so that he could take the judgment that you and I deserve to take your sin and pass judgment upon that sin. And through the waters of your baptism, you are blessed while Jesus is cursed. He takes that curse of your sin and he takes it through the cross and buries it in the grave. While he himself rises to new life, a perfect life, both for himself and for you. He gives you freedom from sin. Yes, you are given many blessings from God. I do want you to remember that. The blessing of freedom. It's a great blessing we have here. Enjoy your freedom. But don't abuse your freedom by neglecting God or his church or serving your neighbor. 
You are given the blessing of technology, again, a great blessing, a gift from God. But don't abuse your technology by neglecting to be in community or fellowship with one another. You were baptized. That is a, perhaps the greatest blessing of all, connecting you to Jesus, binding you to Christ, giving you forgiveness. What a great blessing. And it gives you freedom from sin. But don't abuse that freedom by continuing to wallow in your sin, continuing to dwell and live and engage in your sin. Fight against that sin. Strive against it. And you will be and are brought out of exile from that sin, just like the children of God were back then. They were brought out of exile, out of Egypt, through the waters of the Red Sea, and through the waters of the Jordan River, and so too you are brought out of exile from the wilderness of your sin through the water of your baptism and absolution that goes with it. And that water simultaneously condemns your sin, but at the same time saves you for all eternity. Thanks be to God, for the great gift of forgiveness given to all of us in the waters of holy baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds in the one true faith, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue by confessing our faith by singing the canticle as printed in the bulletin.
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For Matthew, our synodical president, for David, our district president, for Michael, our circuit visitor, for Martin and Chris, our pastors, for our principal, our teachers, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, our governor, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks be Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you.